if you were going to retire in a city, which city would you retire to? Where would you go? Where would you live your final years, your retirement years, your golden years? What city is best? You might be wondering, well, I don't know. The city I live in is probably the best. But you also might be saying, well, I want to move somewhere that is highly ranked for retirement life. And look no further than Tampa. Yes, the spoiler alert, Tampa is number one. But I want to talk today about this study that came out that's called The Best and Worst Places to Retire in 2023. This was a Wallet Hub survey. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the link right there. And I'm going to bring in my co-host, Tony Shore, because he's probably going to have something to say about it, Tony. But oh, I'm I have something right to out say. Of the gate. I want to, I'm going to share with you this website and um we're going to go through the different cities and and how it's how we calculate this you know how they the 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 methodology behind it which i think you'll have a problem with but let's start first with a little a little video the personal finance site wallet hub just released its report on 2023's best and worst places to retire tampa ranked number one followed by Scottsdale, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, Miami. That's four out of five from Florida there, Tony. Casper, Um. Denver, (laughs) Cincinnati, Charleston, and Atlanta. The city was based on 45 metrics. Tampa did well when it comes to taxes, fishing, and age-friendly communities, but could do better when it comes to its share of the population age 65 and up living in poverty. Full results can be found at WalletHub.com. WalletHub, a a fully owned subsidiary of the Florida state government. (laughs) (laughs) No, in fact, um, I don't think so. I don't know where WalletHub is is founded, where they are. I wouldn't be surprised if they were headquartered in Tampa after that, but... (laughs) I want to I want to go through this um and I'll put up on the screen um this that some of the more data so we can kind of see where everyone stands but yeah spoiler alert Tampa is number 1 number 182 I think there's 182 cities ranked the wow. last rank Stockton California wow I don't know much about that but okay before, so you might be saying, "Oh, Dan, what 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 does this mean?" And, and, and you know, you can always find the top, you know, uh, top restaurant, uh, best Italian is you know Domino's Pizza or something. You could find somebody to to say you're the best in anything um, if you pay enough. But uh, let's go through the metrics. So, um, Tampa um, Tampa was ranked number one out of 182, 182 cities. They took the top 150 cities in the country, and then they took the the top the two top populous cities in each state so you know like you know i don't even know i saw casper was on there but uh <laughs> that might be the most populous state uh city in wyoming i don't know to it's be the honest. only major city in wyoming it's, so yeah. um and it's highly ranked and rightly so i would agree but um and they ranked them across four key dimensions okay now we're going into twilight zone the fifth dimension but uh affordability activities quality of life and health care so i want to go through these real quick to let you know what exactly we're talking about here in terms of what is what what do these mean i'm going to draw some of the highlights out and then i'm going to share um some oh, actually let me let me um share my my um screen on what this and you can go here and do it yourself if you're watching on youtube but if you're listening on spotify um here's the actual website um you can go to its wallet hub and you can find this actual survey best and worst places to retire in 2023 so i want to look at this first one affordability right so if i scroll down to the affordability i'm I'm going to skip over what the top are where minneapolis ranks because i know that's what tony wants to know (laughs) um can you see this tony affordability yep 25 total points so they're equally rated the four different categories are equally weighted but within affordability the number one factor is the cost of living sure so if you're and and the the theory is is if your ex- retirees are going to be on a fixed income, 
which nah, that, not necessarily true, but for the most part, retirees have a fixed income. They got Social Security and pension and investments, and it's kind of steady. You know, they're not going out and earning more. Right. They should have an increasing income, but that's a different story for a different right. time. Um, the lower your expenses are cost of living wise, the better you'll be. That's the general theory on it. So the cities that have a lower cost of living are going to rank higher in this category. Also of note, tax friendliness, which I'm not going to lie, Tony, Florida's pretty darn good on the taxation part. They are. We did an entire yeah. show. I'll put it up here for the viewers. They are. Is is it really tax free in Florida? No, no, but it's close. But watch that show if you're thinking about moving to Florida. But guess where else is ta- is uh, has even better uh, tax free uh, thing? South Dakota. Okay, <laughs> fine, fine, right? Didn't see so that one that, on the old list. <laughs> that that's one of the categories, and then activities. We noticed. I don't know if you saw what the big activity was that Florida did really well, according Fish, to that woman. Fishing. That, <laughs> fishing. Tampa Bay has a lot of fishing, huh? I guess. <laughs> well, okay, we're surrounded by water. Um, stuff to do in, inside and out, indoors and out. You know, look sure. at the list here. They got theaters and museums per capita, bingo halls per capita. That's a biggie, I guess. Uh, uh, but for seniors, fishing. Sure. Fishing facilities in Florida are are high, and Tampa are high. So this is this makes sense, and they're equally rate, weighted. So that's something to consider, sure. of course. Then we have quality of life, and these are going to be age related demographics. You know how many other people are older than sixty five that live in the city. Um, you know how many are living alone in poverty that's where tampa did poorly is older people in poverty was higher than normal uh, but there's also walking score i'm assuming that's just a metric of how quick how you can get about the city without having to have a car um mild weather was a big one i wanted to point that one out tony um yep. <laughs> that yeah. might hurt certain cities <laughs> like you were suggesting south dakota has yeah. great taxes but mild weather yeah, not so much. Not so much. Um, crime, um, that sort of thing. So, so that that makes sense. But here's the biggie: um, healthcare. And the way they they measure health care is, you know, different types of physicians per capita, mm-hmm. per resident, um, and then gerontologists per ten thousand residents, age sixty five and older, number of nurses, number of um, physical therapists per people per person. And so the more you have in theory, the better it is. Now, that could be, you know, quantity versus quality, who knows. But um I want to know how many podiatrists are in Tampa Bay. Oh, no. I <laughs> right. So, let's <laughs> let's look now. Let's go back to the rankings and mm-hmm. see where we and now if you look at and I'm scrolling quickly here mm-hmm. if we look at the top cities you see Tampa is ranked number 1 overall but they're ranked 5th in activities and that's a big part of that's due to fishing can you see that tony yeah uh, number 5 they're ranked 5th in 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 um activities um and they ranked pretty high in quality of life not so bad in affordability you know, 40 out of 182 is not bad. It's getting more expensive in Tampa. But if they didn't do as well in healthcare, 79. Yeah, interesting. And and so, well, the question is, well, why? You, know, you figure, wouldn't there be, you know, there's a lot of people that are retirees here. Why wouldn't you have a lot of doctors per retiree? It's just there are so many retirees that in Florida that it's tough to actually have right. uh, as many doctors for all the people that are here. Sure, and Scottsdale has kind of become a hub, Scottsdale, Arizona, for high quality health care, and the number of seniors per capita is a bit lower, so that helps them. But I know there's a there's a Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, and that's a big thing right. Too. So if you look at Scottsdale, they have a much higher score than Tampa on health care. Yeah. So yet, and the and highest in the top also, five, in fact, yeah. They're, they're 24 on healthcare and the quality of life, they're six. Quality of life are the different things that we talked about demographic wise, age wise, other things for seniors, you know, um, then the weather, you know, very mild in Scottsdale. Uh, some might say it's hot, 
but you know, um, but they don't, it's more expensive in Scottsdale than it is in Tampa. A lot more expensive. Yeah. So, you know, but if you look, you got Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, Miami, again, mm -hmm. Fort Lauderdale, very expensive relative to Tampa. Activity is the same because they got a lot of fishing over there, apparently. Um, but quality of life is less, yet healthcare is better. So healthcare on the east coast of Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale is better than in Tampa. But still, Tampa, and, and what's interesting, Tony, and what I want to bring bring this together is a lot of the retirees from the Midwest say they usually go to Arizona, but some come to the west coast of Florida. They don't yes. go to the east coast of Florida. They go to the west coast of Florida right. where they go to Arizona, right? Right. It's kind of like the dividing line. Yep. So... Yeah, I know a lot of people was from here. I know I personally know a lot of people from Minnesota who have retired in Arizona. And then, uh, like you said, the West Coast of Florida, like the Sarasota area is a big one for a lot of people mm -hmm. I know for retirees. Right, right. But I will, I do have to, a spoiler alert or a warning alert, Wallet Hub, I did look it up. I found out where they are based. It is Miami, Florida. Uh, so they, <laughs> good that to might know. be really... that might be how Miami made it into the top five. I don't know. There might be some bias Miami's here. I don't know. Number three. Miami's ranked number three in activities. One of those activities <laughs> is the tour of the wallet up offices. <laughs> highly ranked. <laughs> All right. But let's get to uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida. So Tampa and St. Petersburg are both in the top 12, and they're right next to each other. So it's a nice spot. Um, again, though, St. Petersburg has a lower health care score than Tampa, but they're right next to each other, so you can get on the bridge, go go there. But again, that's an interesting thing to consider yeah. is access to health care. Let's scroll to 14, oh, Tony. Yeah, 14. And look at it's the highest ranked cold weather state city. The highest ranked cold weather city is Minneapolis. Is Casper and Denver well, not cold? I uh, Denver, I suppose, is colder. <laughs> well, as almost but as I cold. will give they they rank very high on activities, which is boggling the mind for many people that are not from Minnesota. <laughs> right. I live there and I will attest that minnesota has a lot of activities a lot yeah. including a lot of outdoor activities but yeah. it's also got the mall of america so <laughs> but look at this where does minneapolis shine health Healthcare. yeah do you see that do you yeah. get that sense i know united oh, healthcare is yeah. headquartered there um, a but, number of a number of major healthcare companies are headquartered here, and we have the Mayo Clinic and the U of M uh, healthcare system is huge. The uh, they they U of M research has developed. I mean, I could name off major breakthroughs in healthcare that all came from Minneapolis. So uh, the be, besides the fact that the Mayo Clinic is headquartered in Minnesota, just a short drive away from Minneapolis. Um, that really helps. Uh, we do have a lot of doctors, a lot of health care. I mean, there's two or three children's hospitals here. There are, you know, we've got St. Jude's and the children's hospital. We have specialty regions is a huge. The hospital systems here are highly ranked and really good. And a lot of doctors are here for some reason. You'd think they'd all want to be in Florida or Arizona for weather, but well, you know, they don't that, work for Wallet the, Hub, I guess. <laughs> well, you think about like Tampa, um, you'd say, Oh, you got so many retirees in Florida, you should have a lot of doctors per retiree, but but it's not like there's only people 65 and up in, in Tampa. You got to you got to have doctors for everyone else, too. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's only so much space. True. I think it, it's it was it's interesting to see though that, um, Tampa, it was number one. I wasn't expecting that. And I do agree with the activities and the different categories. Yeah. And I do agree. And it's anecdotal. Now, they're using data that they have. And, and you can read about where they pull the data from. And it's legit. You know, they're just saying this is this many doctors per people, this many sure. gerontologists per 10,000 seniors. But from from a anecdotal point of view, I do get because a lot of my clients are older, they're retired or they're just retiring. So the conversations we have are about healthcare. We include that in 
our discussions, because if you can do financial planning and you're not factoring in healthcare, you're missing the boat. And a lot of people uh, eventually go on Medicare and they're clients of ours and we help them on Medicare and we go through all the options. And one of the complaints I get from people is, um, great, I, I got the coverage I want, it's the right price, but I just can't get an appointment. Even myself, you know, if I need to see a specialist, I'm, you know, the other day I literally had to see a specialist and I, and they said, oh yeah, they're six months out. And I, I, excuse me? Six, six months out? Months. What does that mean? Is this what does Russia? That even this mean? isn't Russia, is it, Dave? Right. right. So that is an issue that is something legitimate to be concerned about is, yeah, you know, you might have a great plan and it's affordable and it's covered what you want, but if you can't see the specialist you need, that's an issue, you know? So, and that's a different discussion, you know? Do you get on a plan that allows you to go to Minneapolis to go to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota sure. or something, you know? But, so I, what I want to do is conclude by saying, if you're planning to retire in a city, now this is, again, this is just cities, Right. This isn't like I'm going to retire in Stillwater, Minnesota. I'm going to go to Key West. Notice Key West wasn't on the list because it's not a big city. Right. Um, right. And it's not one of the top two in the state and it's not the top 182 in the country. So but that's not to say that retiring Key West isn't a great idea. It's just that this is for people. That I think live it's in a, a city. really good idea. <laughs> I know you do. Which if, is I had the, if I had the money, <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't like, I mean, I, I worked in New York City. I commuted to New York City for a you know, decade. And I didn't enjoy living near the city. I lived in right outside the city. And I was younger. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't want to, I, I, but I saw retirees there and they kind of liked it. They, they were able to walk around. They didn't have to own a car. They can get in, walk right outside their house, their apartment, and go to the restaurants they love and see a Broadway show. And, and, and so there are benefits to living in a city. But if you're going to live in a city, you have to look beyond just the weather and the taxes because that's the big draw for Florida. No right. state income tax. Right. Beautiful weather except during the summer. I can still complain about that, even though I live here. I grew up in New England, in New York, so I know what cold weather is. I lived in Minnesota. I can still complain that it's too hot, but I shouldn't because I choose to live here. But you got to look beyond that. You got to look at some the activities that are available, and you have to look at the health care. And I think the health care is a big one. Will you have access to your health care as you get older? Which goes to my, I don't know the answer. I saw Casper was up there. Obviously, it's a big city. Um, maybe Casper serves the entire uh, Wyoming state, you know, for healthcare, right? Um, you know, I watched that show Yellowstone. I don't know if you ever saw it, Tony, but like, oh, yeah. you know, you might have to get on a helicopter to go to the hospital um, <laughs> just for an average Joe. But, you know, you move to, to you retire in Key West, you're loving the, the laid back life, the water, the weather. But have you thought about whether or not there are enough hospitals there to take care of you as you get older? It's a legitimate question. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. But it's something that people should consider. Yeah. Hey, I want to correct my previous statement. Casper is actually the second largest city. There's only two major cities in the state of Wyoming, and that's Cheyenne and Casper. And Cheyenne is a little bit bigger. But is I mean, that right? che Cheyenne's only 64,000, and Casper is almost 60. So it's, yeah. But anyway, uh, that's just a side note for our listeners because I didn't want to, the emailers to start sending messages. Tony's wrong. They Tell love me. to do that. I, I, the people from Wyoming, if you're listening, please comment and let us know why Casper's <laughs> number one. Um, but, you know, if you're thinking, all right, I'm, I want to live in a city, look at this survey that was done and factor it in. Don't forget that healthcare. It's a serious issue. But if you don't want to think about it, you just want to go where it's ranked number one and you just, you, you're like, I'm going to go. Why not? It's ranked number one. Go to Tampa. Tampa's yeah. a place to be. Tampa's Look me up it. when you're here. We're here. We cover the Tampa area. We do a lot of face-to-face -face retirement planning. So give us a call. But Tampa, Tony, number one. And I'm moving to you know where I'm retiring, though. You know what city I'm retiring to, Clearwater, because that's where you'll be. That's why I'm retiring there. 
Yeah, right. He's just saying that for the fans. He knows that he's going to Key West when his <laughs> wife finally lets him. <laughs> that won't happen. Not happening. Yeah. yeah. So you'll be stuck in in uh, Minnesota, Minnesota. But that's fine. Thanks for thanks for a good show, Tony. Thanks for not trying to force the Midwest as top <laughs> on us. Top ten, no. top five, Florida, 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 Florida. One, only one of the top five was non-Florida. I'm just going to end it on that. Thanks for a good show. We'll catch everyone next. All matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not an investment advice. Dan Whittle, nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance, Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc. and Dolphin Insurance, Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.